This is Donna Fine with More Than a Review, and I'm interviewing um, Cindy, and we're here at the um, Lori Foster Reader and Author Get Together, and it's just been um, a pleasure. We just finished a Facebook Live that um, I'll include the link in the blog, but you're definitely um, just going to want to um, spend some time with her. She's been just absolutely adorable. I just have loved it. So, um, so for people who might be new to your um, your books and your writing, so just share a little bit about your series. Okay, so. Um, well, I guess we'll talk about the, my like tagline is um, fun, flirty, and a little bit nerdy. So I like um, the funny, like the romantic comedy. So that's what I write. I like the the romantic tension too. So where you have all that great banter, and then I usually have something that you know. I think everybody has something a little bit nerdy about themselves. So I like really having that out there, and you know, often the the heroines are a little bit more out of the closet with their nerdiness. And the, the heroes take a little dragging, but <laughs> yeah, so. Good. And so, um, tell us a little bit about your Accidentally In Love series. So, the, my Accidentally uh, In Love series is my Bliss series, um, so that means it's like a sweeter romance. Um, so, it's two best friends who fake an engagement is the first book, it's called Falling For Her Fiance. And so, it's just, it's kind of like, again, all about having fun, about people who don't really mean to fall in love it might not be the most convenient time you know with the friends it's like this has been my best friend forever there's so much at risk if we cross the line but we're both thinking about it but too scared to think about it so that's just that kind of thing where you like you know I always think of like a Sebastian a little mermaid where he's like I didn't mean to tell it was an accident like I didn't mean to fall in love it was an accident so I just kind of like the idea of that like you just can't help falling in love like that's how it happens. yeah that is great. So, um, what is something that readers would be surprised to know about you? So, like, most people are surprised to find out that I grew up in a really small town on a farm. Like, I'm a farm girl. Um, yeah. I drove a tractor, threw some hay bales around. Okay, I didn't, like, throw them around. They're really heavy, but I rolled some. Um, like, yeah, cows, cats, horses, all of that kind of stuff. And so... Like even in high school, like when the guy, some of the guys, we'd, they'd go to check on the cows, and they'd be like, "Let's go check on the cows, Cindy," because like I knew, "Let's go check on the cows," you know. See, if, so people are like, "What does check on the cows even mean?" <laughs> Sometimes, like if a cow's in labor, you have to see, make sure they're having a baby, or if they need fed, or if some cows need. So anyway, and then we'd like sit and play poker while we were waiting to see what happened, and so it was kind of that thing. And because I'm, really, I also really like fashion and makeup and shoes. People just don't <laughs> guess that I was a farm girl, and I'm like, but why not have both? Like, I can get in there, I can chase a cow down, but I, not in the hills. <laughs> but, and that's even some of my friends were like, what do you wear when you're rounding up the cows? Is it hills? And I'm like, oh, those are like the sneaker sketcher hills. No, they're just sneakers or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I always feel like, why, we don't have to choose whether we want to be girly or not girly or comfy or not, like, we can have it all. <laughs> Amazing thing. Yeah. So I have to ask because I just watched The Big Bang Theory where Sheldon is saying it's not possible to tip a cow. <laughs> is it possible? I have never tipped a cow. <laughs> I've never tried to tip a cow. So I don't. I don't know. I. I people have always talked about going cow tipping. Exactly. I assumed. I like. I guess I just assumed that you could. Yeah. But I was like, why would you do that? I don't. I don't know. So I've never tried. No. It is possible to. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, it's to... possible to just kind of, they just kind of move too. I don't, I don't, I've never even seen them sleeping really. They kind of. That'd be my myth buster. I, I know. know. Now <laughs> I feel like I have, next time I'm on the farm, I'm going to have to go try to tip one and see, like, is this a thing? Um, so you mentioned um, like being in the farm and then also being into fashion. So I stalked you a little bit on Facebook and on, um, on your website. So how many pairs of shoes do you think you have? So like a lot. <laughs> I have like I have like rows. Like I built these things in my house or in my closet that you know the stacks of shoes, the racks. And um, right now they look really messy, but right now they're really clean because we're getting ready to sell our house. So like I cleaned it and I'm like, oh, look at my shoes. They're so pretty. <laughs> like I think the last time I counted, it was around. 45. I wouldn't be surprised if it's tipped into 50 now. But I do when I get a few new shoes. I'm like, I haven't worn these for a while. Sometimes I put them in the like area of if I now next time I clean my closet if I haven't worn them, they might be time to go. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> but then sometimes I'm like, okay. And I will admit only like about one or two pairs where I'm like, oh, I should have not gotten rid of them. Yeah. But then 
means I better go buy another pair. <laughs> You know, and so, and so I remember to, when I was with my mother-in-law, she was like, well, I don't have anything that would match like those shoes. And I'm like, that's not how you make shoes. <laughs> you buy the shoes and then you buy something to match the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I have a lot. And even, like, I've gotten a little more into comfy shoes, too. Like, I love my heels, but um, as I've gotten older <laughs> and wiser, um, just, like, also... I'm usually at home by myself. A lot of times I'm barefoot, but like sometimes I need shoes to go run, get the kids, and that kind of stuff. So I've gotten a little more into some like really cute sneak, like rocket dogs, Converse shoes that are just a little more comfy too, so that I have more of a range. Yeah. So. And sandals, like blingy sandals, are also awesome. <laughs> So my last question would be, um, so we have readers that are like aspiring authors and they want to write. So any advice you would give them? So my biggest advice is always like, read, read, read some more. Um, but also like while you're reading, pay attention like to the moments that your heart flutters or that you like really feel for the character or you're like, you get chills. Like, and then it kind of takes a little fun out of the reading because suddenly you go into analytical mode. But like, why? Why do I feel this way? Like, what are they doing that makes me feel this way? Part of it is they built really great characters, but you'll see like what they do with emotion, what other sentences might vary when they're making your heart pound. And then the other thing that I always say is get a really great critique group. Um, when I got a critique group, like my writing, I'd gotten to the highest that I could get alone. When I got a critique group, I swear, like within a few months, it was like taking a really <laughs> intense college class. And it's super hard. Like, you feel vulnerable. Um, some people aren't great at critiquers, critiquers either. Like some people just make you, they want you to just write like them and so they don't know how to critique well. So you need to find people all, I, who, say, who I say like, they want to push you, they push you to succeed, but also they genuinely want you to succeed. Because then they have their best interests at heart. So like there are times like my critique, people that I've had forever, like they'll be like, you can do better. <laughs> like but I thought no you can do better and I know and I'm like I can you know or like uh, one of my he, he writes cozy mystery and it's so funny because at first you think you want to get all romance writers but I found I had a guy he wrote cozy mystery one girl wrote Victorian Christian romance one girl wrote like um, paranormal vampire super steamy romance and we start critiquing and we found that we those things that you do in your genre that you, that everyone does but like having that extra roundness like so he the mystery writer really taught me a great hook like even in romance you want a great hook so I learned so much from them and he, but he would be like mad some this up I know you can <laughs> say some you say things funnier than this you know and so I'd be like okay I'll mad some this up you know we'll make a joke and I think we really push each other but then when we also when we succeed we celebrate it and I trust them they know me and so I think that's really important to find good critiquers um, one tip for critiquing is, if you've ever heard the sandwich method, um, or some people call it the Oreo method, which is always nice, but then it makes me want Oreos, um, is like you have the good, this is amazing about your book, you do a character so well, here are the things that you need to work on. You really tell us a lot of emotion where I would feel like I would like to sh you to show us that emotion. Um, I was a little confused why your character would do this, I don't feel like that's been set up. Um, but I'm really excited about reading the rest of this because you have this really great event. So you have like the good, bad stuff, good. And then people don't, if you just do all the bad, then it's like so, you're like, I don't want to write again, I'm going to go cry. Um, and even still, it's okay if you cry about the middle sound, bad stuff too, because sometimes you just need a moment to be like, this is hard. Okay, I can do better. You like, you need that, like I said, the five stages of like editing, revising, grief. But um, then, and, but then when if nobody says the good stuff, then it's also sad. But also, if people only say, "Oh, it was just amazing. I just loved it," you're not. You're also not getting to be a better writer. And so it's that. It's a tricky balance. And then when you find those people that you work really well with, like you never want to let them go. <laughs> like even when a, a few of my friends have moved away, and I'm like, "Well, you're, you don't live by me, but we're skyping and we're finding this out because I need to." Great. So would you recommend people to go into the writing field? So I would say. Yeah, like it's funny because we're talking about like fashion. So I always wanted to be a fashion designer when I grew up. And then people were like, and so my dad, he, he was a little concerned it wasn't realistic. And like later in life, he was like, I shouldn't have told him that. But it was good. I needed to know. Like, he's like, it requires going to New York. And that. So then I always joke that like, then I was like, well, what's the one more unlikely field to become really good at writing? Let's do that instead. <laughs> um, but, and like, my daughter was like, well, it's kind of sad you don't do what you were dreamed of doing. And I'm like, but my characters 
like I can do fashion design with them and I can say what they wear and like I feel like I got the best of both worlds. I didn't I don't have to go to New York, it's not as complete like where it's cutthroat, I and that that kind of stuff with design school. But um so like yeah, if you love it, I'd say go into it. Um, find writing communities is my other thing. Because you find that there's a lot of people like you and once I found a writing community, that really changed everything. But like I get to tell stories for a living. So I it is I say go for it. Just like you are gonna have to have a tough skin, you're gonna have to pick yourself up a lot of times. Um, creative work, like any artist type stuff, is all very subjective. So you also have to be like, who's giving me this critique, like this feedback. Just like I was saying with my critique group, sometimes the mystery writer was like, oh, we don't really need to know that she's thinking about his hair and his jawline right here. And like, the women in my group are like, yeah, we do. You know, so like you go, he doesn't care about that, but women do. And you know, like, he might not care about other things that in his mysteries that he might need. So you want him to get the source, but yeah, it's, yeah. But it is, it's the best. I, I love it. People are great. But yeah, it is like a bumpy road. <laughs> it's kind of a roller coaster. Sometimes you're like going up and it's awesome. And then sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to go out down this fast. I'm not sure I want to be on this ride anymore. Please let me off. Okay, I think I'm going to get back in line to get on the ride again. Yeah, so. Wow. So do you write full time now? I do write full time. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so I do, and my, my yoga son is, like once he went to kindergarten, it was a lot easier. Like because I was balancing, trying to not, you know, where he's at home and I was doing both. I remember one book I like he seriously would throw an air paper airplane at my face. So I was typing, and then I'd throw it back, and then type, and he'd throw it at my face. It was very distracted. Like I get much more in the scene now that they're in school, but yeah, I do. I write full time, and I really try to write while they're at school. So then when they come home, I can be a good mommy. Um, and sometimes they also really understand, sometimes I am busy. And I can't do all of the stuff that other moms do because I have a full-time job. And I basically own my own business. I think, you know, they say if you work for someone else, you put in like 40 hours. If you work for yourself, you usually put in like 80. And it's true. Like, it's never stopped. And I have to sometimes remind myself to stop and, and find the balance. Where, well, you know, especially with the social media, because that's almost a job in itself, like promoting the book. On it top really of the is. And like, I have a few authors who, who like, uh, writers come to me and say, well, "What if I don't want to do that?" And I'm like, "Then it's not like I'm like, then you need a giant advance from a giant <laughs> publisher who's okay with that. Good luck. Like, it's gonna be tricky. Um, and I say you don't have to be on every social media. Find one that you like and be really good at it. Um, so I think that's the other thing I would say. Like, you know, you need to do some social media. If you don't like Twitter, fine. Like, do Facebook. Do find out. You know, do one really well. Yeah. So which one um, could readers find you on the most? So it used to be Twitter, like Twitter or and or Facebook. Like I'm on both of them quite a bit. Um, and if you message me like on my Facebook page or tweet me, I will definitely get back to you. I'm, I try not to play on there as much as I used to because I'm not getting the work done. <laughs> um, and I, so I, but yeah, I'm on definitely on both. And I really like Pinterest sometimes because it's just like, it's the pretty calm and no one's having political ar arguments. <laughs> like, you know, so sometimes with Facebook you're like, too many people yeah. are arguing. Oh, look, Pinterest, beautiful. Look at this amazing dessert I'm going to ruin later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, thank you I, for having me. Uh, I'm just very excited to try out more of the Bliss series that you've written. So yes. I'm going to go back and check those out. But, well, thank you so much. It was great to have you. All right. So, bye, everyone. Bye. bye.